This is the Grade 12 RT Prac exam, the paper one from November 2018. And in this video, we are looking at the final question, question number four. So here we are at question number four. This is normally the complicated question, the question that requires uh, quite a bit of skill. Um, so let's see what we can do. Let's try to get as many marks as we can. Let's approach it with the idea, if you're in an exam, we're, we're running out of time. It's the end of the paper coming soon. Um, you don't, you, you're feeling tired from writing this exam paper. So um, if you're struggling with this question, the key to this is not to just give up. Look where you can get marks. And so that's how we're going to approach this. So question four. Yeah, we've got a program, they've got a user interface, and there are two parts, 4.1, 4.2, and they tell me that there are three arrays, array days, which is a constant array that contains the abbreviations for seven days, so there you can see it, Mon Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that's great. There is a temp customers one, which is a constant array that we only use if we can't we use it in 4.2, but we only do it if we can't do 4.1. Okay, so that was nice of them. So if we don't get 4.1 right, um, then we can use four, uh, this array so that it's got the information that we need. So they've put data in there. And then there's array customers that's declared with 31 elements, and that's got nothing in it. Okay, great. So we know what's the context. Let's have a look. We have a text file. Visitors.txt has 365 lines. So I'm assuming... That means one for each day of the year. And uh, what do we know? One, two, 31st December, great. So it's the date followed by a hash, followed by the number of customers that came into the restaurant that day. Okay, so obviously very, very busy on New Year's Eve here. Okay, so explanation of the first two lines, they're great. Okay, that makes sense. Let's look at question 4.1. Okay, the user must select a month from CMB months, there's a combo box. And then we're going to go through the text file and populate the array with just the numbers. Okay, so like if we were selecting January, we'll put in the 177, the 96. If it was February, we would start with the 174. So we can have a different um, amount of values each time because let's say it's February, it's only be the first 28. Okay, so there's an example of May. A message must be displayed once everything is done. Okay, so this is a simple going through a text file, putting everything from the text file into an array. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. So yeah, we've got our question. I'm going to pop it open, and there we're going to start. Okay, so what do we do? We got Well, this is a text file question. We are reading from a text file. So I'm going to do my text file algorithm that I know my recipe for text files. So there's a text file variable that we need. And we need some sort of S line. Okay. Of type string. That's what I know. And now whenever I do text files, and I know they didn't say any error checking, I'm going to do it just in case. If file exists. And what is our text file called? Visitors.txt. Visitors.txt. If that equals false, which means it doesn't exist. Then I'm just going to say uh, a message, hey, if we didn't find it, file not found. And then we're going to exit. If we did find it, then we will get to this part of the code. And then we use the assign file. If you're unsure of what I'm doing here, then you might need to go watch my videos on text files. There's a whole video course on it. Be free to watch it. Then we're going to reset, which tells us to start at the very beginning of the text file. And we're going to go through the text file. I know there's 365 elements in it. Um, let's assume we don't know. This is the safest option. While we are not at the end of my text file, what are we going to do? We're going to extract that line from the text file and put it into the string S line. And then at the end here, something that everyone always forgets, not everyone, most people forget, is we must always close our file. Make sure you don't forget the close file. There's normally a mark allocated for that. So, I don't know what this question is all about. I just know we're reading from a text file. That's the reading from the text file recipe, and we can modify that as we go along. So, we're going to be reading from a text file. So, here it is. I'm going to take that first line. So if we do this, if we go to the first line and the very first time S line will look like this. So it'll extract that line and put it into S line. 
move to the next one, put in the next line, and so on. That's, that's what's happening inside here. So what do we want to do? We want to, first of all, we need to get the month that was selected from the user. So we're probably going to do that before we do this stuff. So we're going to add, let's have a string called sell month. Not that we're selling the month, that we're selecting the month. Sell month, how do we get the selected month? Well, we're going to get it from that combo. But, ah, well, it's very useful that um, the values, looks like the values in the combo box are exactly how they are in the text file. That's useful. We don't need to copy the first three. So that's going to be our combo box months dot text. That's going to say go get. So that could be equal to, for example, Jan, if, we, if it was the first one that was selected. Okay, so we got the selected one. Now we're going through the text file. Okay, now we need to add values to our text file. Now we must only do it if we are using a line that matches the selected month. So how do I do that? Well, I could extract the first two, but if it's the 31st, it'll be three. How do we know? Well, we know there's going to be Jan somewhere in it. So I'm going to use my pause function. If the position of my selected month, if this position of S cell month inside of S line is greater than zero. So let's think about this. If this value inside S line is greater than zero, if it's equal to zero, it means Jan is not in there. But if it's some sort of number, a one, a two, or three, that means Jan is in there. That means we're dealing with a value from the text file that is our selected month. Okay. So then what do we want to do? Now this is where we want to take extract that number. So we're going to make a variable to get the number. Type integer. Because I'm assuming my arrays are type integer. Yes, there we go. So let's extract that R num. How do we get R num? Well, we need to get the position of that hash. Hmm. So I'm going to make a variable called not. Let's make an integer called R hash. And R hash is equal to the position of the hash symbol in S line. And in this case, it would be one, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. In this case, it would equal to a six if we were looking at that scenario. So now to get the number, we're going to copy from one, two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to start copying from position seven, so one after the hash. So let's copy from S line, starting at the position of the hash, plus one. We don't want to start at the hash because that's not a number. One after the hash. Well, how many? Well, it doesn't really matter how many. We could say three, we could say five. Let's just say five for the sake of it, because it doesn't matter how many we copy after it, because there's nothing left after it besides the number. So I'm just going to make it five, just to be sure. So that's how we extract. But the problem is, copy returns a string, and we want to con we want it as an integer. So we must convert this copy, which will be a string. We convert it to an integer after it's done its copying business. And that answer, so the answer, it'll copy the 177, which will be the 177 string, convert that string to an integer and put that into our num. Now, what do we want to do? Well, we want to take that 177 and put it into position one of our array. So we're going to need some sort of variable, global variable, that's going to tell me how many elements are in my array. Okay, we don't really have one over here, but we need some sort of way of finding out how many values are in the array. So I'm going to declare a variable over here called r days in month. So whatever the month is selected, that will be how many days are in the month. Okay. So if you declare a variable globally, it always gets started with a zero. So we know that that's already a zero. So 
whenever we want to put some into the array, at the moment at position zero. So we want to put this value with our first value into position one. So before I can put it into, I'm going to first increase uh, days in the month. So now that will become a one. And now in the array customers, at position uh, days in the month, we are going to put our uh, num. Let's think about it. So it's a zero. We found a number we like. Make it a one in position one. Put our new number. Now we go through the next value. Ah, this is also a Jan number, for example. So extract it, blah, blah, blah. We, we've got a new number. We increase our days in month. So we're now on our second day. And in number two's position, we're going to increase, we're going to put our number and so on and so on and so on. And that should be all of it until we get to the end. I don't think there's anything else that we need um, except for a message at the end to say, hey, we finished. So let's say show a message um, array populated. Okay. So that's what I think should be done. So let's see if the code runs. See if any errors pop up. So we select Jan, we populate the array. Array seems to be populated. Okay. I'm just going to, although this isn't part of the question, I'm just going to quickly display it um, in the rich edit, just to see that it is there. Um, our days in month, and that rich edit control, dot lines, dot add, I'm just going to add whatever's in my array customers. Position R, which is an integer, so we convert it from an int to a string. Please note like that this is not part of the question. I'm just doing some testing here. Okay, and I'm just going to put the R in there just for a sec. And just clear the memo control, just the rich edit control, just clear it, just to see that it's working. So we know that the first few numbers for January are 171, and then let's look at the last one is 152. So let's see if that works. See if it works. So if it does work, 177 is at the top, and if we go right to the bottom, 152 is there. So if we select February, if we look at our text while we have February, we can see 174 up until 202. 174 and 202. So let's populate the array. Range check error. Okay. Ah. Right. Because we should probably reset if we do that twice in a row. We should probably set our days in month to a zero, so it resets it if we ever reset in it. It's not a bad idea to do that. So if we use it twice in one day, then we can reset it to zero, so it doesn't continue from thirty-one on from thirty-two and so on. Array populated one seven four, and we said two o two was the last number. Which means that on day 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, day, this restaurant was very busy. Okay. So there we go. That's working. So I can take this code out. Um, because that was just to test to see if it was doing what I wanted it to do. So that's question 4.1.